We're Dick and Kim Cates, and welcome, welcome to, to the Cates, Cates Family Farm. Farm. My father was from the state of Maine and grew up going to his uncle's farms for years and years and went away to the service. Um, eventually found his way to Wisconsin because he thought of it as the land of milk and honey. And he had four boys and a daughter. He couldn't stand them being lazy in town and he, he decided he'd buy one of these hill farms out here in the southwest part of Wisconsin that was no longer a productive farm unit. In those years it was not a managed farm. We had uh, two pastures. They'd be in the back for half the summer, the front the other half, and the thistles grew uh, taller than the, than, the, than the kids. My father gave me a copy of the Sand County Almanac, which I still have on my shelf in my office. And because those ideas were dear to my father, we then began to discuss uh, the notion of stewardship and what conservation really meant and uh, it changed, changed our life. In 1987, in the winter, a gentleman came from Vermont and he talked to us about managed grazing and we had never heard of such a thing. That was our uh, aha moment. Uh, Kim and I looked at each other and said, you know, this farm can grow grass. And if we manage that pasture and we d determine where the cattle will cross the streams, we think we have a model that fits this landscape. With this managed grazing system, what happens is the animals become trained to the system that we have and they actually become quite excited to, be, to move into the next pasture. And so when I go out there, either by foot or on a jeep or pickup truck, they see me coming and they get quite excited to see me because they know that they're going to get fresh grass. And so it actually becomes a very easy system to, to work with because you just go out there and, and usually they follow right behind me and I open up the gate and they happily move into the next pasture. So it's, it's a simple system and it works. It works for the land. I think that's what one thing that we focused on over years was trying to find an operation that really fits this land. We have a, a class two trout stream which means there's some reproduction of the trout. It's a beautiful, pristine stream. And we, we raise livestock along that stream, and so for us to take care of that stream is paramount. And so we've learned how to do that. We've put in 10 stream crossings, which are simply a breaker rock with gravel, letting the grass grow up through that rock, and then controlling where the livestock are along the stream. They're never in one part of the stream for more than a day. And that, what that does is that it keeps the woody brush down, but it doesn't allow them to, to stay there so long that they break the grass down on the banks. All of this land here in the driftless part of Wisconsin was Oak Savannah, a pre-European settlement. When we came back to this farm and realized that it used to be a grassland and an oak savanna, we were encouraged to try to find some oak savanna that could be restored. If we could bring back fire and open the canopy so more sunlight could get in, we would start to bring that back to the original biome or ecotype that was there. And that was very inspiring to us. It's been a, an honor and a privilege to be able to steward this land, uh, to be able to raise our family here. And we are blessed. Most of us in farming have a very deep love of our land and appreciation of that land. And for me, conservation became not just a set of constraints, but it became a very positive part of my life that involves skill and learning to understand what the land could handle. And so I encourage my young farmers, and I've been training young farmers for the past 20 years, to look at that piece of land as your portrait and statement of yourself and try to understand how you and the land together as partners can do better. And I think all of us want to do that. 
It's a process of finding our way.